ECG changes in myocardial infarction. The findings depends on extent of ischemia, whether it is transmural or subendocardial. Duration of ischemia, whether it is acute or chronic and lastly it depends on the location of ischemia, whether it is anterior, lateral or inferior wall myocardial ischemia. ST T wave changes in ECG is due to current of injury mechanism. When normal myocardium gets infarcted, there is decrease in resting membrane potential and action potential shortens. This creates voltage gradient between normal and ischemic zones so that current flows between these zones. This causes changes in ST, T wave in ECG. In transmural infarction, ST vector shifts outwards towards epicardium, so there is ST elevation and sometimes there is hyperacute T wave. It should be noted that reciprocal ST depressions can appear in leads corresponding to the contralateral surface of the heart. In subendocardial infarction, ST vector shifts inwards towards ventricular cavity, so there is ST depression in the ECG. The earliest sign of acute infarction is ST elevation and hyperacute T wave. After hours to days from acute infarction, there is evolving T wave inversion, ST elevation may start to improve and sometimes Q wave may appear in the ECG. After days to weeks, T wave inversion either resolve or persist indefinitely. In one series it was noted that persistent T wave inversion with Q wave was associated with transmural infarct with fibrosis. And normalization of T wave with Q wave was associated with non-transmural infarct with viable myocardium. Pathological Q wave are no longer a marker for transmural infarct. Localization of myocardial infarction in ECG. In anterior wall infarction the ECG changes are seen in V1, V2, V3, and V4 leads. In lateral wall infarction the changes are seen in lead 1, lead AVL, V5 and V6. In inferior wall infarction the changes are seen in lead 2, lead 3, and lead AVF.